Right. You can ask me a second. Just as a caveat, I actually bought this just about an hour ago. <laughs> no, really. For a bloke from the market store. Are you there? Say hello to everyone. You know, if you don't mind. <laughs> he's at something, he's not responding to me. Ah, uh, oh, okay, he's actually decided to open something. I'll find out what he thought I said later. Um, everyone, I'm going to talk to you about Simon. Ah, uh, there you go. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, I think something worked. Now, um, I here to talk to you about Simon, uh, Digital Butler, um, and I'm going to tell you about the journey um, I wanted to actually create from this. and. Uh, the, uh, the inspiration that went behind it. Um, I'm going to go through, I'm just going to introduce Simon to you to start with, um, and can let you know what Simon is supposed to be able to do for you. Um, I'm going to tell you how it began, the journey, and where we see Simon's future. Um, so, in introducing it, um, a video I thought would be um, less haphazard than an actual demo. So, if you just a uh, quick journey, you just click this, uh, play the video. Okay, sorry, Shared folder. As you wish, sir. What's the next step? Have 50 grams of plain white flour. Be sure to wash your hands, madam. <laughs> Incoming text from Ben Riley, madam. I have just left work. I'm on my way. Kisses. Yeah, you can. You can. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Okay, um, I'll whiz through this. So I've now, uh, my, my plan has worked, so I've used a bit of time with the video. Um, Simon is a digital butler. Um, it doesn't really have a formal definition yet. Um, it's essentially a voice assistant with a personality, as you've got to see. Um, and a butler is generally the chief man servant of the house, and that's where I envision Simon to be. So I do intend to introduce uh, home automation. Um, it's meant to be digitally omnipresent, so if you're out of the house on your phone, you'll be able to access it. Um, on you know, so smartwatches, have you got a smartwatch? Do people actually have gone for that? Not that many, I'm the only freak here. Cool. <laughs> so, um, you know, being able to talk through there, or, you know, Bluetooth earpiece on your computer, at home, wherever. So, um, that was the idea. Um, as far as I know, it's the first omnipresent assistant, so yes, it did. Today, if you saw the news, Chrome has now introduced OK Google. Um, yeah, I just want to say, we did that first. And, 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 that, and that was a good six months ago. Was it? No, last year. Last year, a year ago, yeah. Um, so, yes. So, Simon should be able to um, help you to organize yourself. It gives you reminders audibly uh, in a very polite manner. Try to make yourself sound like a human, a butler more specifically. Um, to automate tasks, you can actually tell him to remember to do things at particular times. Um, help you to find information, like uh, he did for me, even though I didn't want it. Um, make you laugh at times, there's a lot of jokes, he, would, he goes into the internet and finds some jokes for you. Safe and clean jokes. <laughs> um, and eventually to connect to your home. So, uh, I'm not going to play this video, um, because that was essentially going to be um, the PC uh, version of it, which is the same Simon, but just on a different client. So what did actually inspired me? Um, uh, what? Right. Sorry. <laughs> Who is this guy? You. Oh, it's um, oh, Tony, Tony, Tony Stark. Tony Stark. Tony, Tony Stark. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> this is Tony Stark. It's from the Iron Man movies. Iron Man. Um, if any of you have seen uh, Iron Man, which may not be that many of you, um, <laughs> he, uh, um, he has a digital butler called Jarvis, um, which controls his house and controls his life. He talks to it, it talks back in a sometimes sarcastic way, um, and uh, it's very intelligent and almost unreal. I watched it and thought, I want one, so I'm going to make one. And that's actually how it started back in 2008, um, uh, when Iron Man 1 came out. Um, so I wanted a digital butler to tell me what was relevant to me in the morning. There was a scene of him uh, uh, actually uh, waking up, or actually a woman in his bed, waking up to um, being told what the weather was like and things like that. So I wanted something that would do that as well. Uh, I wanted something that would connect to my home. Um, I wanted some of the tasks I do frequently to be automated. Um, and I, would, what I wanted one that would even challenge my thinking. At times you would disagree, Jarvis would disagree with Tony Stark, and I wanted that too. Um, and I wanted armor, but that may be for <laughs> sometime in the future. Um, oh, so. Um, yeah, so it was all about me. Um, it's, I essentially just wanted this thing to be focused on me and my wants and my needs. Um, I didn't have any intention of any startup or anything like that. Um, it was just going to be me and me and Simon. Um, so, how did I begin? Um, lots of research. Uh, my background is in computer science. Um, uh, I did a lot of maths in computer science and uh, I looked around about AI. I didn't really study it properly before. Um, looked in forums, see people who have tried to do this kind of thing before. Lots of experimentation on, on a Mac, various different languages. Um, and I started posting things on YouTube. And if you want feedback, YouTube is the best place to go because people love to hate. <laughs> the internet is full of haters. So that's the best way to grow. Is that right? right? Um, <clears throat> so I was doing that for a while. Um, and I also watched lots of movies. Um, there's, you know, whether it be Star Trek and the computer or Knight Rider kits, there's lots of examples of the kind of thing that I wanted, um, um, you know, in my home. Um, so uh, this would be this was the YouTube page that um, I had before, and I had various. I even put up mistakes as well, um, because you know a lot of people don't like to believe what they read on the net. <clears throat> the best compliment I was paid was that it seemed fake and that it was actually planted. So I was like, yes, I'm on the right track. Um, but the expectations of people were way too much. Um, this didn't come out right because it's uh, on, on PPT, but this is actually me fighting 100 sniffs. Um, there's so, there so much for me to tackle at the same time. So, I had to prioritize. Uh, what did I want? Um, I wanted something that would retrieve simple information. We all do that. We go to retrieve information. So I thought, let me automate that. Let me just get into be able to do that response to those queries. 
Then there was intelligent conversation. Um, that was going to be a little more difficult. I did a lot of research around that and found different, lots of complex ways of doing it. But I needed something that was just simple enough uh, for me to do now and let it grow. There's no point in being overly complicated right from the start. Um, a remote operation, like I mentioned, I want to be able to talk to Simon wherever I am. Uh, and home automation, like I mentioned, and far in the future, Golden Army. So, um, I thought it's time to share the dream. Um, and uh, uh, my lovely wife uh, came up with the name Simon, which starts for, stands for Cyber Man. Simon, Simon says, see, see um, and uh, I released Android app in uh, 2012, um, in February, and that video at the same time. Uh, and a year later, I released a Chrome version, which is uh, working on the computer. Uh, that was last year. Um, ah, right. So, um, at that point, I was overloaded with tasks. This started off as just a hobby. Um, I was spreading, spreading to people, um, and the download numbers kept going up, especially one year Avengers came out, the numbers went up, another year Iron Man 3 came out, the numbers went up. People wanted this thing on their phones or whatever, um, and I was busy fixing bugs, doing lots of research, doing promotion, user management. It was it's a lot to do, especially just in my spare time because I have a full-time job uh, and always have. So um, I had to assemble a team. Um, and this team grew organically, actually. Um, a guy I used to work with called Frank, who's sitting here, um, he expressed interest in uh, helping me. So he's been, uh, he's been the analyst and uh, been able to bounce ideas off instead of just shooting things to production straight off. Um, and then Mike and David, Mike is sitting here, it's the first time I'm seeing him. Uh, he's been working with me for the past year from Wales. Uh, and he and David, who's in the States, um, have been managing the community, so that's been taking time off my hands. They knew Simon so well that they could assist people uh, with issues that weren't necessarily bug fixes, so had more time to produce cool stuff. Um, I pressed the button that he said I shouldn't press. Uh, go next. Oh, oh yeah, you did. Uh, yeah. Uh, there. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, what are the challenges? Um, learning curves in all areas. I was coding the, the website, I coded the app, the AI, a Chrome app, Android app, the language I use. None of those are things that I knew how to do before. I could program before, sure, but not in any of those technologies. And that made it so much more fun. Uh, very, very challenging. Um, server costs. By the time the download numbers went up, um, I realized that I had to actually create paid versions of these apps because, um, yeah, uh, it, you know, there's only so long that a wife can be very patient with you as you drain the money onto, uh, <laughs> onto a project. Um, and the uh, increased user base, like I mentioned, um, we have a thriving community of about um, 1,600 members or so. Is 1,800 now. Um, outstanding. Um, so that's what these guys have uh, has helped me out. And time is the biggest one, and still will be. Um, but this is all very um, rewarding. So um, what's next to come? So I've been working on uh, Simon Mark 1. This is something that will be connecting to your computer. In the video you saw that um, I, well, not me, Ben, um, <laughs> was uh, asking Simon to move a file into a shared folder so I could access it at work. Um, and that link is what, that's the part that I'm working on at the moment. Um, to be able to, I'm busy at work locking my computer for my, for my watch just to, for the wow factor because I can't be bothered to actually control or delete and then we'll click on this button. Um, being able to open apps and things like that um, remotely or just by voice um, so that uh, eventually um, home automation. Um, So uh, home, home automation, uh, which would presumably become a crew or PC, you can do the sky's the limit, basically. By the time we've got that connection, then you can get someone to do pretty much anything you want in the home uh, and in an intelligent manner. Um, and also, a lot of people have been asking me to do this on iOS. It's an Android app at the moment. I, I do admit that at first I was using it to get people off iOS and onto Android. It works for a large, uh, you know, large portion of the time. I like to think I'm responsible for Android's rise recently. And, um, but I will be doing an iOS version, so a Windows phone, and if BlackBerry is still alive by then, um, <laughs> possibly that too. Thank you. Um, and that's, that's it. Excellent. So, questions? If you have them. 
Yeah. Is the interface purely voice, or can you mix and match between keyboard and voice input and output? Exactly as you said. Um, so I could have typed um, all those voice commands both on the Chrome app and the Android app. You can type. And you could see it say as a running header on a on a. Um, say a Firefox screen or something like that. Yeah, exactly. So okay, you can actually type out the commands. Um, that's one of the key differences between this and a lot of the other assistants out there, which is only by voice. And speech recognition isn't all the way there yet, as you probably noticed. So um, I also did include things, uh, included a way for you to give uh, nicknames to some of your contacts, so that if, uh, if you like to say uh, Christabel, and it pronounces it with two L's, then you can say refer to Christabel as Christabel with the right spelling. So every time you say it, you interpret it the right way as well. So you can increase uh, its understanding even with the speech technology, but there are ways you can type it as well. Have you used applications like Dragon Dictate and things like that? My, wife uses, my wife's a oh, translator yes. and she uses that and it's, it, say, it's very cost effective, but I would probably call it perfect, even mm. when it's trained to her voice properly and it's using a proper um, a high quality microphone. Yeah, I agree. Speech technology has a long way to come. Um, but uh, I found that it's, uh, it's come far enough for me to be able to, uh, to put something workable um, and try and account for some of the uh, shortcomings, if you like, of some speech technology. Anyone else? What um, advantages do you think you have over something like Google Now? Um, yeah, um, so yeah, go, go, Google Now uh, is a, a powerhouse. And uh, I guess I'm flexible. I'm, at the moment, I'm the one guy. Uh, developing everything, and uh, uh, it means that when people say I like this and I like that in the community, um, I can sort of literally turn out at night sometimes, depending on how difficult it is. Um, so I've been able to include things that make it more personable, um, make it sound human, um, as opposed to uh, just either searches or intelligent information. Um, we had a, a, a battle with my wife a couple of weeks ago with her on, on Google Voice and me and Simon. And, uh, I was pleased to report that some of the things that just turned out with searches for Google actually came up with actual conversations. You're talking to a, a human, uh, Simon. But, yeah, flexibility. Do you want to take one more question? You can pick up just one more. Please. Yeah, you're first. Um, I don't know how you thought about monetizing this, but I don't want to press the button. I quite like PA, though. Yeah. But I work in the digital rights of Google management. Do you see a crossover into your business orientation world? Someone's asked me about this before, um, and there is, there is potential of. Um, I had a conversation with someone about creating another Simon, but a different Simon um, for their particular business, and that has connections to their internet and everything, their, eco, their whole ecosystem. Uh, and I do think that is a future possibility. At the moment, it's, um, it's more of a time thing. I've been mainly just kind of following my dream uh, of trying to, you know, and along the way, share, you know, share what I've got. Um, but I definitely think that's a future possibility. Um, and there has been some interest in that area too. Cool. Can I give a round of applause, please?